The United Nations says one in ten people on the planet don't have access to so-called improved sources of drinking water. Those sources include a household connection, protected wells, and public pipes. That U.N. report was issued back in 2012. I asked Torgny Holmgren if things have improved since then. He's the executive director of the Stockholm International Water Institute. Yes, I believe that things are improving, but still, as you mentioned, some 1.8 billion people at the world still lack access to clean, safe drinking water. This is still a huge problem. There is another figure, some 780 million people lack access to improved drinking water, but we need to get all people in the world get access to clean, safe drinking water. One more note from the United Nations. In 2010, the UN General Assembly said access to sufficient water is a basic right. What are some of the biggest barriers to accomplishing that mission? As we are right now speaking, there are ongoing negotiations in New York for the new setup of sustainable development goals, when of course water and sanitation is a key aspect. I think there are two major causes for why we still are having no access to clean, safe drinking water for the world's population at large. One is geography. As we know that more than the majority of poor people in the world live in areas with quite severe water stress, that is one factor. Another one is actually poverty in itself that lack of access to infrastructure, facilities, hand pumps, infrastructure, water works, etc., also a key factor. So those two combined mean that we have a huge problem still facing in the world in getting access to safe drinking water for population. You know, we aired a report just a moment ago about the tens of millions of gallons of water that are wasted every day in American cities. Old leaky infrastructure is blamed for that. Your background is actually as an economist. Why is it so expensive to upgrade or build better infrastructure? I think there are a number of factors behind this. As you mentioned now, the main water uses in the world is not households, human beings. They are the manufacturing industry, irrigation for agriculture purposes, as well as energy production. And we see a huge increase worldwide in the use of water for energy production and manufacturing industry. Here I believe that we need to get more uh, smart in the way that we use water in the future. We need to improve on water efficiency. If I compare to the energy sector, and we have dealt quite a lot with the interdependence between energy and water, we see that in the energy sector, energy efficiency is the driving force that we today can produce the same amount of output with less and less units of energy used. We need to improve on the water sector as well as we have done in the energy sector. Well, it's one thing to talk about infrastructure. That's something for governments and cities to handle. But a lot of water is wasted inside of homes as well. What can people do in their everyday lives to help conserve water? I think people are getting more aware of the severeness of the water situation in the world. I could compare, for instance, in California, Sao Paulo in Brazil and northern China, we have vo severe water stress in the communities. The awareness is one point. Another one is incentives that governments also need to put in incentives that make people use water more efficient in the future. And I think that water, well, of course, water is not a free good. It costs to provide water. And I believe that in the future we will see more differentiated pricing of water, which will drive us to use water more efficient in the future. And there are technological advancements that will follow up on such incentive schemes being put in place. All right, Mr. Torney Holmgren, Executive Director of Stockholm International Water Institute, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.